Hi Trigot, good to see you again. Okay, nice to see Thanks you. Thanks very much for the invite. Welcome to the Cool Flow Collective. We've got an exclusive access to the Grundman Museum with over, well, about 75 cars, about did you 75 say? Cars, yeah. 75 cars in total. Let's check it out. Right, here we go, we're going to start with this fantastic firebug here. I believe this was the feature car for HO17, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. It was just found uh, five months uh, before the meeting and it was found in France and is completely unrestored, 1950 fire. Brigade. Amazing. Yeah. This is the car that you chose to put on the event t-shirt. Exactly. We, yeah, we had the privilege to uh, work with you at the show. It was fantastic. Yes, and uh, we used it for the shirts, you know. And uh, I think this is a very interesting car because it's completely understood. Yeah, it's fantastic. So where did you, where do you source all these cars? You've obviously got friends all over the world. Uh, that's right. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you've got a son like I got, you know, he never sleeps. He's always on the Internet. He got friends all over the world. And yeah. uh, when he finds something that's father, there's another piece we need to have. <laughs> <laughs> so that Well, we're, we're going to catch up with Christian later. So. Then, then the problem starts, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think he's down the workshop. I spoke to him on the phone. He's going to come up and see us. Yeah, but the point is, you know, most of the cars, over 75%, were restored by myself in our shop. You know, it's not my profession. Yeah. Just learning. You're a pure enthusiast. Learning by doing, you know? Yeah, yes. brilliant. Like us all, just pure enthusiast. <laughs> pure enthusiast. Yes. Awesome stuff. What was the first car that you purchased? The what first year was car, it? The, the first car I purchased was 1977 in the States. I bought it in a junkyard in San Diego and restored it. Really? And drove it all the four years I was stationed in the States. Oh, and wow. We are, we are getting right now to the car. By oh, the time, the you know, this car here, is it? the blue car, it's a blue car, yeah, by the time it was red, you see me, uh, because oh, one of the biggest... Is this you in the picture? Yeah, that's me in the picture. Oh, amazing. And uh, as you see, uh, the VW Porsche magazine, they made an article about me, about the supersonic Beetle Builder, because I couldn't <laughs> imagine uh, that I was uh, flying F force supersonic oh. and driving the 30 horsepower in the States. I couldn't oh, believe right. it. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I picked up the fact that you said that you were stationed, so... You were stationed with the Air Force? I was stationed with the Air Force, yes, and was an instructor pilot for the Air Force. So that was your first introduction to it VWs? It was my first int introduction to the VWs, yes, because I said as a German in the States you have to drive a German vehicle. Yeah. And I enjoyed, you know, doing all the stuff by myself. So literally that car started everything for you? That car started everything. By the time I never thought, you know, I'm going to have a collection like this. So. Are the majority of the cars, would you say, from Europe or would you say they're from the States? Okay, uh, I got a little collection of, of Porsche. The Porsche, most of the cars from the States. The other one are out of Europe. Yeah. And the oldest one are from East Germany or from Russia. I will show you. Yeah. Because in Germany, you know, they didn't care about the old cars in the early times. Uh, but in Russia and in East Germany, they didn't have anything, so they saved. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's yeah. the reason why yeah. there's still much original stuff is available. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's brilliant that your son, and when, when we worked with you at, at the HO17, uh, the, the thing that I picked up on is that we've got a family-run business at Coolflow, yeah. and all the family are involved and very passionate about what they do. And when we worked together, it was, it was all your family and good yeah. friends. I noticed that you're all into it. Yeah. You've that, all got a passion for you it. You know, that's a good thing with VW. You know. It's a big, big family all over the world. Yeah. And I think you realise this on the meeting. You know? yes. there's, yeah. there's no guy who has lots of money and, and says, OK, I'm a better than the other no. one. Everybody is talking about how to fix a break. Or everything. Yeah, it's great. And Everyone's it's on the same family. level. Yeah. Everything on the same level. Yeah, it's brilliant. Nobody, nobody is jealous, you know. If you go to Porsche meetings, you know, everybody's looking. Can who be got, a little bit. Who got the most expensive car, you know, not in the VW. Talking scene. of Porsche, tell us about this one. Yeah, this is a car from a customer, and he asked us to, to help him to do the engine. Okay. And we're doing the repairs for uh, VW Classic and for uh, Nutzfahrzeug. Oh, right. So alongside the collection of cars in your personal museum, you've actually got a business that... Still yeah, restores Chris, and does all mechanical. Christian opened a business just for technical repair. Oh, brilliant. Transmission and front axle and engine for the brilliant. early ones. You know, this is, this is not another highlight. You won't believe. This is a bus built on a chassis of a Kübelwagen from wartime in East Germany. Oh. And everything is out of wood. If oh. you haven't seen the, <laughs> this bus, you won't believe. The top is wood. You see? And oh, they, yeah. They put some linen over there and just some paint. So the whole body the whole is made body, out of wood. Even the floor is, is wood. 
And if you look inside here, the guy who's sitting in the middle, you know, they're always shifting at his ass, you see? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, if you, that's amazing. <laughs> that's East Germany, you know. I mean, how did you find it? What's the story? The story is that uh, there were parts for a Kübelwagen in, in the newspaper. And Christian went to East Germany and said, where are the parts? They said, they are below the bus. Yeah, you have to cut the bus. He said, no, I can't cut this bus. Yeah, take it with you. So, so you, to, went, you went somewhere we went to pick up parts, to pick and up this parts, is what you found. This, this is what he, what he finally came out with. Do you find that because you're obviously big collectors, you actually attract people selling cars because they want them to go to a good home? This is one of the reasons. Mm. Another reason was when the reunion came in Germany, you know, Christian was uh, just finished with school and had three months off prior he went to the army. And so I sent him to East Germany to make contact. And we never cheated these guys. He always gave them a fair price. And so they're still thinking about that. And today they are calling us up and said, you gave us a fair price. You got first choice. Brilliant. So you're making good friends. You're fair. Exactly. Always fair. You're yeah. fair. Yeah. yeah. And this is, this, is what, this is what fair gives you. Yeah. A good collection. <laughs> it's yeah. absolutely. Yeah, here's, here's the oldest camper. Westphalia camper, 1950. Yeah, I was reading about this bus before, and it's um, yeah, it came out of the Westfalia Museum, you know. Just one car after another has got an amazing exactly. story, is not it? And it just yeah. seems to get rarer and rarer. Yeah. And uh, you're, I understand that you're um, you're restoring the fifty at the moment, the nineteen fifty. The fifty is there. Okay, we're still collecting parts. Yeah, because if you start the restoration, and you have to stop because you don't have the start, then you start all over again. Yeah. So that's we said, okay, first we're going to have the parts and then we start the complete restoration. And it, what's the goal with the 50? Is it to, to get it running for the 70th anniversary next year? Uh, I don't think we're going to be going Maybe to not going to make it, yeah. But, you know, you don't have to rush yourself. No. Then, you make, then you make mistakes, you know. Yeah. We want to stay as close to the original as possible. And it's hard to find parts for this very, very early because this is still this prototype, you know. Yeah. That's, and uh, so we want to do it right. That's, that's outstanding. Yeah. yeah, do things right, restore it right, yeah. and do everything that the bus deserves, because it's a very exactly. rare piece. Yeah, the Nazi thing is, was, again, was found in East Germany, you know, was driven till the reunion. So and this is the earliest one known? This is the earliest window bus in the world. Yeah. Now we know because there was a, a VW asked for the oldest bus in the world, and he put his papers in, and then he got a letter from BW. We are sorry, it's a, it's a band or it's a closed bus, not your window bus, but you are the oldest window bus in the world. So, <laughs> Amazing. Well, yeah. It's going to be great when it's on the road. I, I think so, too. Yeah. Was, there, was there another interesting? This is a radio bus. The first mobile radio station in the US, completely unrestored, in a Zamba. That's exactly as you got it. Exactly as we got it, yeah. All operational. <laughs> <laughs> All the stuff is still in there, you know. We didn't change anything. We just left it the way we got it. So every, every, every meter you step, it gets better and better <laughs> and better. Yeah. We're only a quarter way through the collection, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> well, good stuff. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to head over to the other area. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to look at some more cars. Oh, this is interesting. What's the story with this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there you got an airplane with BW technique. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Fox plane. Yeah, with 40 horsepower VW engine. And here you got a helicopter with VW technique. You see VW engine? Yeah. And VW transmission, you know, they turned it about 90 degrees, closed the one side, yeah. <laughs> and used the other one as a grain shaft. You know, I got uh, some thousand flying hours, but I never would no. go in <laughs> like this. Because you, you see, just one belt here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if this one is gone, that's it, you know? I've got to ask, where do you find something like that? Yeah, again, in California, and uh, Christian was in a, in a junkyard, a well-known junkyard where everybody in the old VW scene went there, was in the dirt, yeah, hidden, close to Barstow. And he found this one and he said, okay, we have to have it for our collection. It was a problem to get it here. You see, we had to cut it. Yeah? Yes. 
but uh, no, it's a lot. I think I've picked up on the magic words. It's a we <laughs> have to have it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the words. Christian relates them words to you and you exactly. Say, okay. Yeah, you're, you're with an airplane, or we got a helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> awesome.